Resurrection Sunday to you. This is an amazing Easter Sunday. So glad that you are here with us as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Thank you so much for being a part of this Resurrection Sunday and we pray that you are having a great day today. I am Pastor Walker of the AWH and we are glad to be with you in the sanctuary on this amazing day. Listen, we have an awesome uh, resurrection worship service playing for you today. Some amazing praise and worship, an amazing praise, mind dance from our core ministry. We're just excited about what God is doing today, an amazing word from God today. But before we get into all of that, I want to just remind you of a couple of things and ask your help on uh, some things. We're still dealing with COVID, guys, so we want to encourage you to continue to wear the mask, continue to do the social distancing, continue to wash your hands and be mindful of, of, of what's still going on. A lot of places are opening up, a, a lot of states are opening up, a lot of uh, businesses are, are opening up now, but just because they're opening doesn't mean that we are in the clear. So we want you to continue to be cautious and continue to wear those masks and, and do what you have to do. Now. We're excited to get back to the facility at the AWH, but we want to do it uh, in a safe way. We want you to be able to come back to worship uh, and to fellowship in, a, in an environment where you feel safe, where you know it's safe, where you can just let it all go and worship your Lord. So this is what we're asking that you do. If you have already received either your first vaccine or both uh, vaccines, we want you to take a moment this week and email us at uh, this email address and it'll be in the description below. It's gotmycovidshots at gmail.com. Again, gotmycovidshots with an S at gmail.com. And just let us know, hey, I've already received my first one or I received both of mine. And that will help the leadership kind of gauge where we are as a congregation so that when we get back, we'll know what we need to be doing. So if you would just take time out this week, if you've already received the first one or the second one, email us again. That email address will be in the description below and let us know, hey, I've received my shots. That way, when the leadership comes together to start to make some, some decisions, we'll have some uh, very important data. So we look forward to you responding to us with that to let us know. And if you hadn't gotten those shots, get those shots. We have gotten ours. We're set to get our second dose, I believe, on the 24th, I think. I'm not sure. We'll have to look at that. But but guys, look, you do that. And we're going to all get back to the facility and have a hallelujah time. Okay, so now with all of that out of the way, it's time to worship. It is time to praise. It is time to just celebrate Jesus Christ our Lord. So you know what to do, guys. Come on, get up. This is Resurrection Sunday. Resurrect out of that bed. Come on, res resurrect out of that chair. And let's get ready to go into praise and worship. Chief is just primed and prepared. I'm always ready for worship, and I know you are, so come on, let's go. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. 
amazing resurrection Sunday worship. Listen, it is time to celebrate. You heard, the, come on, you heard the song. Let's celebrate. Let's be excited about what God is doing. Let's worship him and give him joy. Let's celebrate Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Awesome praise time. Awesome praise time. And guys, we still have a lot of wonderful praise time to go. We still got some more praise service. We still got the, the Easter mind praise dance from Cole. We, we just got a lot going on this morning. So you continue to worship and you continue to praise because this is an exciting time. Listen, so let's, let's go ahead and get ready to worship in the giving of tithe and offering. Uh, this is the time when we show our, our trust and our faith in God. This is the time when we worship him and, and be thankful to him for what he has done. So if you don't have anything to give, guys, God has been just opening doors for you to give. He's put it upon the heart of Sister Walker and I to do that for you. And we want you to take advantage of that. If, if on this Resurrection Sunday, you don't have anything to give, but you want to give, you want to sow into the kingdom, you want to bless the Lord, then you have an opportunity to do that today. You can go ahead and begin to text her at 334-549-0208. Again, 334-549-0208. And let her know that you have a heart to give. And guys, we will, we will just be honored to give on your behalf. It's private, it's confidential, no one knows, but, but she and I, and we would, we would just want to do that for you so that you can, you can give today. Okay. Now, for those of us that are ready to give, we're going to give our cash app, but before we do that, we're going to have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you, Lord God, for what this Sunday means to us. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to sing and praise you and worship you. We thank you for the opportunity to give tithe and offering unto you, to be obedient in the giving of tithe and offering. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our source, that you are the one that has kept us above. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us the courage to ask for help if we need help. We thank you for the opportunity to help others if you have blessed us so. We thank you, Lord God, for our family and our friends that come and help us, our business partners that come and help us to continue to meet the needs of the people. We thank you, God, for all that you are doing in our lives. And we pray, Lord God, that this giving time will be done with the, with the right heart, with the right motive, with worship in our minds. For we worship you, the true and the living, the one and only. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, amen. Say amen to that. All right, so come on. Let's go ahead with some cheer, with some excitement, with some joy. Let's get ready to worship God in the giving of tithe and offering. If you don't have it now and you want to give, go ahead and text Sister Walker. She is waiting right now, 334 549-0208, 334-549-0208, or you can cash app your tithe and offering, cash app uh, AWHBC, cash app AWHBC, or you can contact our church accountant uh, by telephone, and she will be able to tell you how to get tithe and offering to her. She's just waiting for you. All of that will be in the description below, guys. Thank you so much for helping us meet the need of the people. Thank you so much for helping us build strong Christians and complete people. Thank you so much for helping us be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We love you to life. for helping us move the ministry and the giving. Thank you so very much. Guys, listen, we're still in our Resurrection Worship Sunday, our, our Easter program, if that's what you want to call it. We are going to be blessed, guys, by our core ministry. That's ministry combined of praise, dance, mime, drama, and, and things like that. They did this amazing uh, production uh, that I got an opportunity to see this past week. Uh, and when I viewed it, I must be honest with you, I was, I was in my office and I, it, it brought me to tears, guys. It, it, 
it did there is an anointing on 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 what what you are about to witness that will move you i thank god for that so with all praise and all glory going to our father i want you to witness core ministry and their production Has been a drought for way too long. We need to sing our freedom song. Oh Lord, we need a touch from you. We really need a touch from you. Lord, we need to hear your voice. Our hearts are open, we have no choice. Oh Lord, we need a touch from you. We really need a touch from you. Send your last rain. Hey, send your
Wasn't that an amazing uh, praise production, mime and dance? Simply amazing. Praise and worship, simply amazing. God is doing great things, guys. He's doing great things through the ministry. He's doing great things through your life. And he is worthy of every ounce of praise. And we pray he brings the rain. We pray he brings the rain. We pray. We pray that his anointing fall on you wherever you are. We pray that the anointing of his joy and his health and his healing falls on you. I, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you were lifted and you felt what I felt when I viewed it. I pray that it moved on your heart. God is worthy. This is Resurrection Sunday, guys. This is the Sunday that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And I, I know this is, you know, family time and, and, and things like that. And, and you, you have other things planned. And, and we got Lord's Supper today. But I want, I want to take just a moment and talk to you about what's, what he put in my heart about the new life. That's right, the new life, the life that Jesus Christ died for us to have. And how, how his resurrection and, 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 and our symbolic resurrection ushers us into a new life, a, 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 a new way of thinking, a new way of being, a new, a new way of, 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 of having hope, the new life. So come on, get your Bibles, get your print Bibles, your phones, your tablets, and however Holy Spirit brings it out is how Holy Spirit brings it out. And we're going to just celebrate today the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it does for us. So today we're going to begin with the book of Romans, Romans chapter 6 verse 3 and 4, out of the contemporary English, talking about the new life, you know, the new life. Okay, so you got it? Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, out of the contemporary English. This is what it says. Don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. Do you see that? One more time, guys. Do you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? 
When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life. As Christ Jesus was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. Listen, guys, we're going to talk about this new life and, and, and this passage of Scripture where it says that if we were baptized, we were baptized into the death and the burial of Jesus Christ. Now, guys, listen. You, you and I were saved by grace through faith, by the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's, that's our salvation. That's, that's how we are saved. That, that's how you and I are forgiven of our sins and have, have a right to eternal life. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross as our Savior, as our Redeemer, that's what he did. But there, but, but there are certain things within the scripture that, that we must follow in order to experience life the way Jesus Christ intended for us to experience life. And one of them is baptism. And we don't talk a lot about baptism. We, we don't talk a lot about what baptism does for you and I. See, even Jesus Christ was baptized. Jesus Christ was baptized by John. They called him John the Baptist, John the Baptizer. And when Jesus Christ went down in the water and came up, heaven opened, and God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And then we learn in the New Testament, dealing with Paul a lot, that Paul talks about baptism. And here in this passage, when, when Paul, Paul, Paul talks about baptism, he, he equates our, our baptism with the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, we are then able to identify in the spirit realm with that which Jesus Christ did. Now that's important, guys, and that's powerful because that lets us know the power of our commitment to baptism. So Paul says this. Paul says Jesus Christ was crucified, died, buried, and raised from the dead. Now, you and I must identify with that in the spirit realm in order to walk in the newness of life, in order to have this new life, in, in order to have this, 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 this life that goes with, with the resurrection, this resurrection life. You and I, we must be baptized. So, <clears throat> Paul says, as, as we go down in the water, when you're baptized, when you go down in the water, that symbolically represents Jesus Christ being buried in the tomb. That symbolically represents the death of Jesus Christ. And then when you and I, we come up out of the water, that represents symbolic the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents Jesus Christ being from the dead on that third day. It, it, it represents Jesus Christ being raised in a new and glorified body with all power. It, it allows us as his children to identify with what he did. And if we can identify with what he did, we can then live in the life that he wants us to live in. So baptism. And this passage of scripture says that when we die, with Christ in baptism, we are raised when we come up with him in the newness of life, in, in, in the new life, in, in, in the new purpose, in, in the new direction, in, in the new goal. We, we are raised with him. We are raised to live the new life. If I ask you today, are you living the new life? Now, I'm not, I'm not asking if you are living a, a saved life, a forgiven life. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you if, if you, you know, your hope is to make it to heaven. I, I, I'm asking you today, are, do you live, are you living now the new life? See, what happens is this. When you and I begin to live the new life, when, when you and I are raised uh, out of that water in baptism and we live the new life according to the new and resurrected life of Jesus Christ, when, 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 when you and I do that, some things should change in our life. 
some some things should happen in our life that that will show that we are now living in this new life. But guys, listen, before you can have a resurrection, you must have a crucifixion. Before you can have a resurrection, you must have a dying. And that's where we begin to look at this. Because the new life is a commitment from you and I. What once, once we once we once we determine to be baptized, this new life that we are raised in, this new this this new and glorified life that we are raised into, when we come up out of that water, is a life where we make a commitment to live according to the will of God. It's, it's a life where we make a commitment to walk by faith and not by sight. It's a life where we make a commitment to put down those sins that so easily beset us. It's it's a life where we make a commitment to live by my faith in Jesus Christ and not by what I feel in my body. It's that type of commitment. And when you're living a new life in Christ, when you are living in the newness of life, you are making a commitment daily to live your life based on what will give God glory and not necessarily what will satisfy you. Oh, my gosh. The new life. The new life. So, so in, order, in order to begin this new life, you and I must die. We must die. We must die to self. We, 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 must, we must die to the things that we want. We must die to the things that, will, that we think will make us feel good. You and I must die to self. Before that can be the resurrection, before that can be the newness of life, before that can be the glory of your life, before that, before any of that can happen, you got to, you got to die. Now, I'm not talking the physical death right now. I'm not talking about the physical death of, of your body. I'm talking about the death of you yourself. That 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 that, that anger. That that oh my god. That selfishness, that, that drive to make you do what only you want to do. I'm talking about that self. That, that, that self that craves things that God say you shouldn't crave. That, that self. That, that self that makes you uh, uh, hate your brother. That, that self that makes you hate yourself. That self that makes you talk about folks. That self that makes you walk in doubt. I'm talking about that self that, cra that craves the flesh. That self that, that makes you think you're better than everybody else, that self, that, that self has to die. That, that self, that part of you, that self in you, that self that, that self that drives you to sin has to die. That self that drives you to, to satisfy you regardless of what, that self, you know God say don't do it, but you do it anyway. That part of you got to die. You, you, you walk by what you want to do and not by faith. You go after what you want to do and not by what God said. You lean toward that that pleases you instead of what God said, let go. That part of you has to die. It has to die. It has to be crucified before that can be a resurrection into a new life. Before that can be a resurrection into a new destiny, there has to be a crucifixion and a death. And today he's telling us, today we, we're going to walk in the newness of life. We're going to live the new life, but we must first die. And I need you and you need to begin to think about all those things that you're doing that you know are not of God. All those things that you're doing in the dark when you don't think anybody sees you, that's not of God. All the things you say and all the ways you act and all the attitude that you have and all the things that you do because you just want to do them when you know it's not of God. Oh, you've been fooled, you've been duped to think that it's right, but you know it's wrong and it is not of God. Those are the things that you got to let die. Those are the things that you got to crucify in your flesh. Those are the things that you got to say no to. Not anymore. I'm choosing to live the new life. And if I choose to live the new life, there are just some things I just got to stop doing. There are some things I got to put down. There are some things I got to turn my back on. And he is asking you and I today, are we willing to let our flesh be crucified? We got to die. The flesh in us has to die.
daily. Let's look at this real quick. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. Talking about the new life. Talking about the walking in the newness of life. And in order to walk in the newness of life, in order to live the new life, there are some parts of you and I that must be crucified and must die. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. Out of the easy to read. This is what it says. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their sinful self. They have given up their old selfish feelings and the evil things they want to do. Look at that again. Come on, we got to look at it again. Those who belong to Christ Jesus, you and I, brothers and sisters, we have crucified our sinful selves. We have given up our old selfish feelings and the evil things we want to do. Listen. Come on now, if we want to walk in the newness of life, if we want to walk in the power of his anointing, if we, walk, if we want to walk in the victory that he died for us to walk in, then you and I must make a decision today to stop the selfishness, to stop the evil things that we want to do, to turn, listen, that, oh my God. You and I, we are not a part of the world. We, we have been called out of the world. You and I have been set aside for great purpose. We have been set aside for great destiny. And if you and I want to enjoy and live the new life, if we want to enjoy and live and walk in the newness of life, then you and I must make a decision today to put down the selfish stuff. I, I like it. I, I like it. Because in the Old Testament... God gave ten commandments to the children of Israel, and then Jesus Christ came in the in the New Testament. And says, "I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hang all the ten and all the law of the prophet on two. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself." And then God turned around in the Old Testament and says that He's gonna write the law on the table of our hearts, which means this: I don't have to tell you today that you are doing wrong. You know that you're doing wrong. I don't have to call you out on what you're doing because you're being convicted of what you're doing. I don't have to give you the list of do's and don'ts because God has put that list in your heart and you know the things that must be crucified. You know the things that you must stop doing. You know the things that you gotta let go. Today is your day to crucify this flesh. Today is the day to crucify self. Today is the day, the day to let self die so that you and I might be raised in the newness of life to walk in the new life. Come on, say amen to that. This is the day. Guess it, guys. Sin has no power over you and I because Jesus Christ has conquered sin. Jesus Christ has conquered the power of sin. He's nailed our sins to the cross. All you and I have to do now is accept it and make the effort to let it go. Oh, my God. I, I, can, I can start naming out a whole morning and all that. I, I can name it out, but, but you know. And today he's calling you to crucify it. Today he's calling you to let it go. Today he's telling you and I, that's not us. When we were baptized, when we went down in that water, we died to sin. When we went down in that water, we died to self. When we went down in that water, we died to what the world wanted to make us do. When we went down in that water, we died to the lust of our bodies. When we went down in that water, we died to the pride of life. When we went down in that water, we died to the lust of life. We died to it so that we might be raised in the newness of life. Where we see things differently. Where we perceive things differently. Where we walk differently. We talk differently. We think differently. We walk, talk, and think based on God, not on flesh. You got to crucify today. You got to crucify today. You got to let it go today on this resurrection Sunday. There's a resurrection for you this morning, but you got to first go through the crucifixion. And guys, listen, I know, I know crucifixion is not nice. Crucifixion is not pretty. Crucifixion is not pleasant. Crucifixion hurts and, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's painful and, and it, it puts something on you that will break you. But I'm telling you, that thing that will be crucified, God will raise up something better. That 
that thing that you let be crucified, God will raise up something greater. That part of you that you just don't think that you can live without, let it be crucified and God will replace it with his grace and his mercy and his love. That, listen, there is nothing, there is no one, and there is not anything on this earth can, that can do you better than Jesus, that can make you feel better than Jesus, that can give you purpose better than Jesus. Jesus Christ, if you allow the things that you are holding on to that you think you just can't do without, if you will let it be crucified and let Jesus fill the void, then, my, oh my God, then, my beloved, you will begin to enjoy life the way you were intended to enjoy life. Life is not full of drama. Life is not full of headache. Life should not be full of worry. Not should, you shouldn't be losing your hair, losing your sleep, and losing your appetite because you are stressed out. The new life is a life inside of Jesus Christ where you have peace and joy abundantly, where you come and go and find good pasture. That's the new life that you are a part of, but first you got to let some things be crucified. you got to crucify that flesh. Jesus Christ suffered. He was crucified, whipped all night, body open, back open, disfigured, dismembered. Before there can be a resurrection, there has to be a crucifixion and a death. And before you can resurrect, before you can, get, listen, before you can find yourself in that great resurrected anointing that God wants to put on you, it's, it's time, it's time, it's time to be crucified. It's time, it's time to crucify the flesh. Are you willing today? Are you willing today? Oh my God, are you willing today? Are you willing today to let the rain fall? Are you willing today to glorify him? Are you, are you willing today to celebrate him? Are you willing today to have the life that Jesus Christ died for you to have? Are you willing? And if you are willing, if you want the newness of life, if you want to live and walk in the new life, if you want to live and walk in the peace and the joy and the victory of the Lord, then today you must decide, brother, you must decide, my sister, today to live. Let the flesh be crucified. Say it. Say, crucify my flesh, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But you know the sweet thing about it, guys? You know the beautiful thing about it on this great resurrection morning? That when there's death, crucifixion, when there's burial, see, with God, there is a resurrection. So, so no, no. The crucifixion is not the end. The, 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 the crucifixion is not the end. That, that's why you, you don't, listen, that's why you hear grace. Grace, grace, gra grace is the great thing that comes to, 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 to remind us that out of our sin we can enjoy Jesus Christ. Grace. So no. The, the crucifixion is not the end of the story. The crucifixion is the beginning of the story. The resurrection and the new life is the ending of the story. And that's what he wants for you and I. He, 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 wants, us, he wants us to walk in the newness of life. He, he, he wants us to experience life and experience it to the full. He wants, us, he wants us to be able to come and go and find green pasture. He wants us to be able to have peace and joy that pass all understanding. He wants us to be able to call those things that be not as though they were. Walk by faith and not by sight. Not fearing the very shadow of the valley of death. Oh my God, that's what he wants for you and I. That's what he sent Jesus to die for. Okay, so you know what, guys? Jesus wasn't the first to be raised from the dead in the scripture. He wasn't. Lazarus was raised from the dead before Jesus. Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead before Jesus. But what made Jesus' resurrection different the Lazarus resurrection was this. Lazarus, when he got raised from the dead, got raised in that same old corrupted flesh. He, he got raised from the dead, but he was still in that flesh. There was nothing new. Yes, he was not dead, but, but he was still in that same flesh that died once before. When Jesus got raised from the dead, 
Jesus got raised from the dead in a new and glorified body. And that's what resurrection is for you and I. That is, that is the raising of the new. That, 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 is, that is the raising of the fresh. That is the raising of the untainted. And that's when you and I came up out of that water and we were raised to walk in the newness of life. That was the beginning. Old things passed away. That was the beginning. All things have become new. That was the beginning for you and I to, to let the old go and begin to live in the new. To let the corrupt go and begin to live in the grace. To, to let the flesh go and to begin to live in the spirit. That was our new. Oh my God. That was your new. Your new when you got up out the water. Your new when you came up out that water. Your new when you got lifted out that water. That new, that new, that new moment when old things were left in the grave. Behold, you became new. You began to get up and walk in the newness of life. You had a resurrection through Jesus Christ's power. How do I know? Just think about it, guys. Think about it. If you can remember, if you can remember, and I hope you do because if you can't, then it might be a problem. But if you can remember your baptism, if you can remember what happened after your baptism, how excited you were, how on fire you felt, how you felt so close to the Lord, how you, how you felt like you could just walk through the fire and move mountains. You could call down the angels from heaven. You were so on fire for the Lord. You were in the newness of life. You saw things differently. You didn't get upset so quickly. You, you, you moved by faith. You thought things that were of God. You taught things that were of God. You maneuvered things based on, you handled issues based on God. That newness that you walked in. That should be daily for you and I. But we got to make sure we stay clean. We got to make sure we don't get corrupted again we gotta we gotta make sure guys that we are protecting our spirit and protecting our soul by not picking up those things of the world not being a part of those things that we know god should god says we shouldn't be a part of not not going with the flesh but going with the spirit not going with self but going with god yeah the old you is dead the, the old you <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. See, when you, when you got baptized, you left that old you in the grave. You left that old you in that water. And you got up a new you. Come on, look, look at this. On this great resurrection morning. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. And then we're going to call it a day. We got Lord's Supper too. Amen. T talking about Walking in the newness of life, living the new life. And I pray that's what you're doing today. Don't let your past stop you. Don't let what you had to endure in your past stop you. Don't let, don't let friends stop you. Don't let family members stop you. Don't let you stop you. We're new. All things have passed away. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, out of the contemporary English. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, out of the contemporary English version. Look what it says. This is what it says. Anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The past is forgotten and everything is new. Look at it again. Anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The past is forgotten and everything is new. That's you. Come on, say it. Say I'm new. You are new. This is what he's saying. Because you and I belong to Christ. The past doesn't exist anymore. The past is forgotten. The past is dead. The past is washed away. All things become new. You are new. Your attitude is new. Your mindset is new. Your will is new. Your, your, your goals are new. Your purpose is new. Everything is new. What you desire is new. You belong to Christ. You are a new creature. You are a new creation. Old things about you have passed away. The problem is this, guys. We're trying to live a new life with old things. 
We're, try, we're trying to live a new life with old things. We're, tr we're, we're trying to live in Christ and have a part of the world. We, we tr we're, tr we're trying to do what Christ wants us to do and do what the world wants us to do. We tr we, we, we're trying to be new and old at the same time, and you can't be new and old at the same time. It's like trying to be hot and cold at the same time. And in the book of Revelations, when you are hot and cold at the same time, you're lukewarm. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ can't stand lukewarm stuff. He spews it out of his mouth. And a Christian, a saint, a born again person that's lukewarm trying to trying to deal this in the world and deal this in the body God might be telling you today you're not tasting good to him it might be time for you to crucify that flesh crucify yourself crucify your will crucify your desires crucify your goal and become hot for him think what we would be guys if we put as much effort in pleasing God as we do pleasing ourselves we plan to please ourselves. We sneak to please ourselves. We, we do all this other stuff trying to please the flesh and please ourselves. What if we took that amount of energy and did it to pleasing God? Oh, my God, what would our life not be like? Don't be lukewarm. You cannot be new and old. You cannot be hot and cold. Everything about you is new. Your, your mindset new. Your purpose is new. Your goal is new. Your drive is new. Your talk is new. Everything about you is new. Your praise is new. Y'all, come on. Your worship is new. Your desire to please God is new. Your walking by faith and not by sight is new. Your ability to handle situation is, is new. Everything about you is new. So stay new. Somebody say it. Say stay new. Stay new. Don't, don't. We almost done. Listen, remind me, remind me, since this is what we call Easter Sunday, remind me when I was growing up. Guys, you know, at that time, the little boys would have on short pants and a jacket that, and they plaid and we had the bow tie on and the, and the knee-high socks and the white shoes and things like that. That's how they dressed us for Easter and with the Easter basket. And we went to church looking good and, and saying our Easter speech, you know, and, and doing these things and, and having a good time. But when you got home, when, when you got from church, when, <laughs> when, when you got from church and you getting ready to go outside and play, mama said, boy, take them good clothes off. Why? You're not going outside and waddle in the dirt and run up and down them streets and get grass stains all in your good clothes. Take your good clothes off so that they can stay looking good. And Christ is telling you and I today, don't let the new you, don't let the new life, don't you take that new life, don't you take the newness of life, don't you take the new you and take it back to the world and waddle in the dirt and waddle in the mud. Don't you get the grass stains of the world on it. You make sure you take yourself and you protect yourself and you stay spiritually clean. You stay away from those things. You protect yourself from those things. Why? Because you are brand spanking new. All things have passed away and you are now walking in the newness of life. You are walking and living the new life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on, somebody say stay clean. Stay clean. Why? Because you're walking in the newness of life. Amen to that. Why do we know that? Why do we know that? Okay, this is the guys. I promise you. We know that because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And at the tomb, Mary, Mary wanted to touch him. And he had to stop. He said, whoa, stop. You can't touch me in this new and glorified body. Your corrupt can't touch this incorrupt because I've not ascended to my father. In other words, you, right now the flesh you're in can't touch the spirit that I'm in, he said. Your corrupt body can't touch the new body. So, so, so you and I have to be able to protect ourselves, to protect the new us, protect the spirit, but protect that new life, protect the walkings of life, the newness of life. And there's some things that we got to say no to. You can't touch me. I can't do that. I can't go there. I can't say that. I can't take that. I can't drink this. I can't smoke that. I can't ingest that. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't lay with that. I can't. You, there are some things you and I got to say no to because we now have a new life. We now live in the newness of life and we're going to keep ourselves clean. Say amen to that. Amen. Awesome word today. Awesome word. Awesome word. Listen, the newness of life. My gosh, the newness of life. That's you. All things are passed away. 
all things have become new. Those of us that have been buried with Christ by baptism have been raised in the newness of life. And that newness of life has everything that you and I could ever hope for. Go. Okay, so come on. Let's get ready for to, to celebrate with Lord's Supper today. I'm telling you, this has been an awesome Resurrection Sunday. Celebration, awesome. I mean, songs, dance, my, it's just been an amazing, awesome, life-changing word. My God, the new life. I pray that you're living that thing right there. I do. So we're going to have another praise song. Then we're going to come back and have Lord's Supper. And then we're just going to enjoy the rest of this day. I'll see you on the other side. Happy Resurrection Sunday. What's that? I, that was a life-changing word. That was a oh, wake-me-up moment right there, I tell you. 
the new life, living in the new life. You protect yourself. You, you continue to walk like God called you to walk. Okay, so listen. Bef before our Lord and Savior went to the cross for us, knelt our, our sins to the cross to shed his blood, he met with his disciples uh, to keep the Passover. Uh, he, he, it was there that he was becoming our Passover. So we're going to celebrate that. Uh, he took some bread and gave thanks to the Father and shared it. Uh, with the disciples. So let's do the same. Father, we thank you for this uh, bread that represents the body of Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, his body endured such suffering and pain, the shedding of blood. And we, we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for the stripes, for by the stripes we're healed. We thank you, Lord God, that his broken body enables us to stay together. Thank you for that. Thank you for this opportunity to eat this, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. In his name, amen. Okay, come on, guys. Let's eat that, which represents the body of Christ. You know, that was that crucifixion before the resurrection. Okay, come on. Then he, he took some fruit of the vine, and he gave thanks and shared it with his disciples. Let's do that as well. Father, we thank you for this. That represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, that his blood washes away our sins, that it, it, it gives us, Lord God, uh, forgiveness of our sin. And we do ask in the name of Jesus Christ right now that you do forgive us uh, of our sin, all those things, Lord God. And we thank you that uh, you are pleased with the blood of Jesus Christ and all that it does, the new covenant that we have in it uh, with you. So we thank you for this opportunity to, to drink that which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, okay, let's drink the blood. Guys, listen, happy Resurrection Sunday. I pray that you have been blessed today with everything that you have been a part of, from the dance and the mimes to the praise songs to another life-changing word from God, encouraging us to walk the new life, to live the new life, to walk in the newness of life. Listen, don't forget, if you've, if you've taken one of your COVID shots or both of your COVID shots, please, Email us at gotmycovidshots at gmail.com so we can get with the leadership and, and, and begin to maneuver on when we're going to get back to the facility. I am Pastor Walker of the AWH Guys. It's been a blessing to be with you this, this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. You keep that going. You keep this praise going. You keep that word, the new life, walking in the newness of life. You keep that before you every day. And every day you fight for it. You fight that flesh. You crucify that flesh every day. And if it's our Father's will, guys, we will be back together on next Sunday for another life-changing word. Love you to life. Bye-bye.